Video games are played across the globe, from Paris to Tokyo to New York City, and are developed in all five continents. Often, countries that play a lot of games are the same countries that produce them, like Japan and the States, but there is one notable exception, Bella Italia. Why are there not many games produced in Italy? The reasons are many, but first things first, roll the intro. Buongiorno to everyone, Blue Fox here, and today we'll talk about the Italian video game industry, or I guess the lack thereof. Even if Italy is the 10th biggest market of video games, worth 1.8 billion euros and has about 26 million gamers, there are no major video game developers in the peninsula. There are some love small studios, like Ubisoft Milan and Kunos, but nothing that comes close to other developed countries. Why is that? As you may already guessed, the answer is not that simple. And to explain it, I have to talk about these two factors, culture and economic. Starting off with the former. As you may have guessed by my accent, I'm just like the best one in the world, Italian. Being a gamer in Italy is a bit of an odd experience, something that is different from other gaming countries such as the US or the Netherlands where I live. While it is true that Italy is home to a high level of gamers, both by net value and per capita, the great majority are casual and only play big franchises such as FIFA or Call of Duty. Now, I'm not saying that all Italians only play sport games, but a great part do, and consider gaming like a leisure and not a passion. Claiming that video games can be much more than just a pastime is considered silly at best. Unfortunately, the games present in the peninsula don't enforce a strong gaming culture. If we take 2020 as an example, the most sold games in Italy were GTA, FIFA, Call of Duty, Minecraft and Dragon Ball Z. These are not bad games by any means, but as a consequence, the common Italian man simply thinks that video games are football or shooters, and not also big, narrative-driven adventures. What I'm trying to get at is that in Italy, gaming is not taken a lot in consideration. Games are often looked down upon popular media. Every time I hear video games ever mentioned in TV is when old people talk trash about new trends, like in the Italian show Le Iene. Speaking of, do keep in mind that Italy is the oldest country in Europe and second in the world. And since gaming arrived quite late in the Mediterranean, not many older folks in the country have ever touched a gamepad. In an interview with Paolo Chisari, president of the Italian Interactive Digital Entertainment Association, ASV for short, he claimed that uh, we are not so open to new culture, and that's something that really was an issue and still is an issue. But right now, the phenomenon of video games is so large that the government needs to try, at least to understand what's the situation. He and many others highlight the cultural challenges faced by Italian studios and how much is crucial to defeat prejudice to make these fields grow more. Professor Alessandra Michalizzi goes a bit more in-depth into this issue in her research. She lists four main cultural obstacles for the Italian gaming industry. Widespread prejudice on the role of game as a social practice, lack of higher education regarding video game development, cultural risk aversion, and cultural predisposition for piracy. Professor Michalizzi goes quite a lot in-depth into each point but this is a quick synopsis. The first point we already explained. Gaming in Italy is simply considered child's play. Adult gamers are considered nostalgic at best and immature at worst. The second challenge is education. While there are great universities and professional schools in the country, there are not many laureates in specific technical game development skills, from degrees like game design or programming. The third point regards Italy in general. Italians are known to avoid taking risk, Hence, doing things like investing in yet not developed industries. And finally, piracy. Since piracy played a big role during the 90s and 200s, Italians tend to attribute less value to digital productions, such as, of course, video games. In a nutshell, culture plays a big part in the reason why the gaming industry has not taken off in Bella Italia. Again, it is next to impossible to measure all variables separately, but it is clear that the bad combination of reasons led to an undeveloped culture of gaming in comparison to other European countries, and thus the lack of big studios in the Italian peninsula. The cultural problems the video game industry faces are bad, but these obstacles are surely not uniquely Italian. So then, what's the practical reason why the video game industry didn't kick off in the nation? The answer is made of three simple words, lack of capital. In Italy, since no major development team rose, at least yet, obtaining capital to kickstart an actual company is a Herculean task. Think about it, why would investors put money on newbies when they know other countries have greater and more successful markets? And from the development point of view, what would you risk to work for a small business when elsewhere in Europe, great companies already exist? This is a bit of a catch-22 situation. There cannot be any snowball effect if there is no snow to work with. Furthermore, the video game industry has the particularity of having big hotspots rather than to be spread around evenly. 
Let's take Canada for example. Ubisoft Montreal, Ubisoft Quebec, Square Enix Montreal, Binox, Edison Montreal, Warner Bros. Games, Electronic Arts Canada. What do all these companies have in common? Simple, they are all based in the French-speaking region of Quebec. According to a research paper, half of the studios in Canada are in Quebec, a Canadian region that only accounts for one-fifth of the Canadian population. What does this mean? It means that video game developer studios open up in cities where other video game developers already are. In Europe, we have a similar situation. These six countries are the biggest for game devs in the continent, while little is left for the others. Since game developers set up new shops next to already existing game developers, it makes sense that promising game studios would rather open in Stockholm rather than Naples, since the city already hosts big names such as DICE, Avalanche Studios, Motion, King, Machine Games, Overkill Software and many others. In addition, the little Italian gaming industry present in Italy has a different approach to business than other countries. As explained by Professor Fabio Viola, France and the UK have a more industrial approach in gaming, while Italy has maintained an artisanal industry. What this means is that currently, Italian developers that develop games in Italy do not wish to compete with big productions, but rather prefer to develop smaller indie titles. This makes sense. To compete with the big dogs, you need big studios, big development teams, and above all, big budgets, all hard to obtain. Going back to Michalizzi's research, the current market in Italy is fragmented, disorganized, and there is little investment. In fact, she thinks calling it a market is already too big of a stretch. In her paper, she explained that, due to a lack of structure in the industry, there are countless bureaucratic problems that impede the development of a greater industry. Administrative problems such as the regulation of the protection of the work, the legal definition of who does business in the video game sector, and the weak relation between developers, designers and publishers are all matters yet to be solved in the country. These unresolved matters make the video game industry not able to grow organically, and even the smallest of challenges lead to big consequences. Altogether, all these economic challenges keep the Italian developers in a hard position, where it is simply much easier to work elsewhere in the EU or in the world rather than to stick around and make a production in Italian soil. The economic aspects are intertwined with the cultural ones, meaning that it is very hard to overcome the economic difficulties if the cultural obstacles are not yet surpassed. Even if the odds are not in Italy's favour, nothing stops the country from becoming a hub in the future. It's very unlikely that out of the blue, Italy will become home to major dev studios, but there is the possibility Italy does start to catch up to other European countries. First of all, while Italy may not have many major video game studios, it does have one major video game publisher, 505 Games. The publisher from Milan is not the biggest publisher out there, but it did publish high caliber games such as Control, Payday and Bloodstream Ritual of the Night, as long as ports for famous titles such as Terraria, No Man's Sky and Dead Stranding. Not gonna lie, I have no clue on how to measure success among video game publishers, but for what I gather in my research, 505 Games and their parent company Digital Bros, also Italian, are not doing half bad in the stock market. What this means is that video games may not be a product Italians are yet willing to produce, but there are Italian investors that are active in the market seeking to make a name for themselves. And there's more, according to Metacritic, in 2019, 505 Games was the publisher with the highest graded games on the platform, meaning that Milan knows how to invest in good games. As a last point of hope, culture around video games in Italy is starting to change. The aforementioned association of SV is growing, and events like the Milan Game Week gain bigger audiences every year. Being an independent video game developer in Italy is not easy task, but it is possible, and foreign companies such as Ubisoft are noticing talent among their Italian division. There's still a long road ahead, but according to every article I've read to learn more about this topic, everyone has a somewhat positive attitude that the tides are changing. Slowly, but surely. Cultural challenges are fading away with time, and due to the pandemic, Italy has recorded higher new records for games and hardware sold, reaching a net worth of almost $2.2 billion. As Kronk would say, oh yeah, it's all coming together. Italy is known to make high quality products, from fruit, to fashion, to Ferraris, to films, to furniture, but unfortunately, the gaming industry still needs to flourish in the country. I hope to see the day when big studios pop up all across the peninsula and therefore see more games made in Italy. Regardless on how the situation will evolve, I hope now you know why there are not many games produced in Italy. If you made it this far, grazie mille for watching today's video. If you liked it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more. Let me know what are your opinions about the topic. Do you think there is hope in the Italian gaming industry? I'm looking forward for reading your comments. Personally, I think we have a shot, but I'm not too sure when the industry is going to start growing. I wish a good day and see you next time. Arrivederci!